Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cup and I am Penge and welcome back to Crossroads Inn and of course welcome back to the Tankard and Teapot where last time out we were able to get our hands on the final branch of the upgrade tree. So this one here on the left or the west I suppose had been locked away but we got to a point in the story where we could unlock it and we had a lot of upgrade points. We had loads and loads so we were able to be quite liberal with our upgrades. We got quite a lot from the newly unlocked tree but we got a lot from everywhere else as well. It was quite exciting. So what does this one bring us? Well it got us nobles. So nobles are coming in here. It, the place seems quite popular with nobles. I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> I don't really know why but there we go. So we've got lots of nobles coming in which is exciting. So I like that. Yeah, maybe that's a good thing because they bring in lots of money and stuff because they're rich. So that's quite good. Uh, we also unlock the option to have gambling tables. We haven't got them in yet but that might be what we do this time round. Um, got ourselves vedettas. We do have a vedetta on the books as it were. We built them a room and she is working for us. And then we've got a load of other stuff as well. So yeah we could uh, I mean these are slightly less exciting. We've unlocked some beans. <laughs> Yay. Uh, we've got some more land. That's quite good. We can make our own candles. We've got beehives. And we've got better quality workers and all that kind of stuff. But yeah we did do quite well out of the upgrades. There were an awful lot of upgrades that we were able to grab. And um, yeah it, we had uh, quite a lot of fun new things arriving. Um, so what we're able to do was we went over here so we built our little garden out here so we've got ourselves some beehives we also put a hay bale in to stop people trying to creep around the edge of the fence because the fence doesn't quite it doesn't quite meet the edge of the inn which is a little bit annoying but never mind so yeah we changed this round so we expanded this room over here so the stock room sort of comes out here and then we've got a little sort of garden area over here these are beehives some are making honey and some are making wax here is the candle maker that we use to make our own candles it doesn't seem to be making them quick enough um, in the intervening period between the end of the last video and this one I have moved time on quite a lot and I've had to buy a few candles every so often because um because yeah they just don't seem to make enough candles from this but never mind and um yeah let's have a look at the Vedetta's fancy room there it is look a fancy bed a little changing sort of wardrobe -y type thing and um and there she is She's just sat there just putting a bit of bit of lipstick on or whatever she's doing. I don't know. But there we go. So we got that room in as well, which is very, very good. So, um, yeah, we can continue with that. I have moved the, um, the game on quite a bit since the end of the last part because we've managed to pay off our loans. We have no loans. Look, nothing. The, but the loan of your veil, we don't owe any money there. And the Untamarkian bank, which we can't click on. There we go nothing there either so we've been running it on i think i ran it on seven days possibly and we saved up a lot of money we've paid off the loans we've also been ordering stuff in as well because during those seven days people have been eating and drinking and doing whatever so we've had to spend quite a bit of money on ordering stuff in uh we've been doing town criers and such like as well but we now have eleven thousand three hundred and ninety one goldens here which is very very good so that's with all our debts paid off we still have this money and that might come in useful because also last time we learnt about a man called Trovin I believe he was called who was some sort of treasurer and he's like part of the story now but we don't really know what his game is at the moment but a lot of people in the comments have said oh right okay I see it's like this is it good luck save your money so um yeah I suspect given that he's a treasurer of some sort he's going to come in and either I don't know impose really heavy fines on us or taxes or he will just come in and rob us. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I do not know. But whatever the case, he will be forming part of the story, I imagine, at some point. But I think he knows who we are. I kind of get the impression that he might know who we are in relation to the uh, the former, now deceased king, the late king. Uh, but yes, he's not appeared in the story yet. So we will see what happens when he arrives. Current goals are, we've done all these things. We just need to make a trade route to Ricodi. And that is it. And we do have all these other bits for set up gambling tables, hire a scoundrel, all that kind of stuff. What I would like to do first with some of our money, I would like to expand and get another one of these Vedetta rooms because we want two of these. Two fancy rooms would be very, very nice over here. But that does mean that we're going to have to change the garden area around a little bit because we need to build on top of here we need a corridor and we need this room just here to be uh, you know at the same size as this so uh, yeah we need to change this round a little bit that's not a problem it will be absolutely fine so if we just move you out of the way there we go so she has gone so that lady is there so she's not going to be involved yeah we're not going to sort of trap her into a room or build walls around her or anything strange so we just need to move everything down a bit really so 
Let's grab this. Oh no, that's the wrong button. Let's grab that. Um, do you know what? I think we can we can get rid of that. I would say we can probably sell that for a hundred, which is nice. Then we'll move this over here for now. So let's just move. Do you know what? Let's just put it right next to there. Let's just pop it. Let's put it there actually, because these will need to move over a little bit as well. I imagine because we need to put a door somewhere. So the plan is to expand the kitchen because I feel the kitchen needs some more storage space. Now they're not using these shelves very well over here, but yeah, I think the kitchen could do with a little bit more storage. So these squares here can become kitchen squares. So what we can do is, can we sell the? Hang on, let's go to doors. Sell the door. That door. Sell, sell, sell the door. Sell the door. I can't sell. And that's a window. That's why. Doors. There we go. <laughs> sell the doors. There we go. Right. So doors are gone. And then we need to build kitchen. So there we go. So add to the kitchen. So yes, I'd like to add to the kitchen, please. So these squares have now become the kitchen. Apart from that one has not. Why not? Oh, because there's a tiny bit of fence sticking out on the end there. Um, that'll do for now. It's fine. Just move out the way, kitchen. Right, and then more kitchen, please. There we go. Right, marvellous. So we've got the kitchen in. That's going to need some nice flooring. Come on, let's do it properly. There we go. Right, we're going to need a door back in. Do you know what? Let's put a couple of windows at the end there as well. Why the heck not? So, um, doors. What are the external doors like? Again, I like it to be consistent. Um, blue, those ones, I believe. So let's just put a door just there. Or just, yeah, how's that going to work with the beehives? I can't put it there because I feel they're going to walk out through the fence. And that's a bit nearer. So let's drop a door just there. So there we go. So that's now sorted. And then we want to move, I would say maybe, can we move that over? No, that's unfortunate. Right, let's put that on this side. So swivel that around and put the, the candle maker here. And then just move the beehives over. There we go. Look, so you've got plenty of room to come out of there. This fence also needs moving. Let's just move it back and over as much as we can. And toward that wall a bit. A bit more. Oh, we can go through the wall quite a lot. Okay, uh, about there. That'll do. There we go. So the garden has become a little bit smaller, but it's still fine. And that means that we've got lots of room in the kitchen now for more storage. Because, yeah, it was, it was looking a bit tight. Although, yeah, now looking at that, there's, there's not that much food on those shelves. But okay. So... Uh, we'll get this, we'll swivel that round, so pop that there, and that means we can get a couple more shelves, which is very exciting. Also, um, our cauldron just here, we have a very basic cauldron. I think we can buy a nicer cauldron now. So if we go to here, we've got that one, I believe, so a simple cauldron. But I think we can buy fancy cauldrons, we can buy reliable ones, a funky cauldron... Oh, yes, who wouldn't want a funky cauldron or a well-designed cauldron? Now, the only thing is, there seems to be no benefit to having any of these things. That one is for the style of adventurers. That is the style of adventurers. These have no benefit. They've got no benefit at all. They're not durable. They're not attractive or whatever. They're just, they're just sort of cauldrons that are sitting there. Um, I think we will get one in. Uh, I, do, I do quite like, I like the well-designed cauldron. I like the fact that this is a funky cauldron. <laughs> I do like a funky cauldron. Do you know what? I'm tempted to get the funky cauldron. because Just because of the word funky. Um, so let's, let's just move things around for a minute. Put that there. Put that there. Just shifty them out of the way. So yeah, how, how would a funky cauldron look? Um, oh yeah, it's, it's quite big. It's quite a big funky cauldron. But yeah, if we popped that right next to the other thing. There we go. So put that next to the grill. There we go. So a funky cauldron is ours, and then the water can still go there, which is quite nice. In fact, we might have to move it over a little tiny bit. There we go. And then we'll sell this old one. So let's sell that for 50. Wow. Okay, right. So we'll get rid of that for not very much at all. And now we have a funky cauldron. I think all the other stuff we have is sort of the best that we can have right now. I don't think we can have any better equipment or shelves or whatever so uh, right now let's just throw a few more shelves into the kitchen area because that will be very helpful because we want some more storage so can we put one sort of that can they reach that yeah they can probably reach that i'm sure it's fine and then one there as well um and then what we'll do is we'll make sure that they're all for food so these ones in here are kind of for some goods they've got a little bit of extra food storage in here but this is mostly for plates and candles and crockery and like kind of soap and stuff they are putting food into there 
Maybe we do need to go and have a little look at these settings now. Because, yeah, we really want all the food, ideally, in the kitchen area. Because, you know, that's where they're going to do the cooking and stuff. So, yeah, let's just go and fiddle about with these. We need to come out of that. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go into the settings and we'll sort all these things out. So, in the storage settings, we will take off stuff like plates and mugs. Don't store those here, please. Just food products in the kitchen. Okay, there we go. So settings on the shelves have all been tweaked. So these are all for food stuffs and not anything like plates and candles and all that kind of stuff. This one here has been set the other way. So this is only to store plates and candles and crockery and whatever else. So non-food stuffs. This shelf here is just a generic storage shelf. Just put whatever you like on this one and this one. It's a shame there isn't a sort of copy settings feature. So you could go and set this one up and say, right, I want you to store this, copy those settings, paste it to this shelf and this shelf. You have to go through each one and individually click and go, yes, I don't want you to store mugs on this or this or this. Gets a little bit fiddly, but do you know what? Never mind. It's in now. So there we go. So now that is in, which is good. So a bit more storage for the kitchen. And it also means that up here we can start work on another room. So another fancy room. Now I think we might be able to get the room in. I don't know if we're able to get all the lovely sort of fancy adornments in the room as well. I am not sure. So let's have a look, shall we? So let's go back to the building thing. Uh, go to here. Uh, we're going to need an empty room, so this is just sort of a corridor type thing. And then we want to get ourselves a private room, my goodness. So yes, we'll have one there, one there, and build at the back of there. So they're not actually that expensive, really. They're not that expensive. We've got lots of upgrades to bring the cost down. Uh, we'll have a fancy door with it, which is nice. We also want the nice flooring. That's, that's walls. There's floors. There we go. So this flooring, I do like that flooring. It just makes the room look a lot lighter, just a lot nicer. Uh, windows, we need some of those, so pop those at the back. There we go, so some light can come in, that's quite nice. Um, are we going to have enough money to make the room the same as this one? I do not know. Let's have a look, because I'll make it the same. I'm not really bothered about how it sort of, you know, is laid out or whatever. It's going to perform more or less the same function. So let's flip that round so it's a bit like that. So I can go just there. Um, and then we need... The fancy dressing table. You know what? We might be all right. We might be okay. So if we pop that there, and then we want the... What have we got in there? What chest is that? Um, oh, I don't know. Hang on, hang on. Zoom, zoom, zoom. What does it look like? It looks like that one. It looks like an elegant chest. Okay, so we'll have the same thing just here. So we'll pop an elegant one just there. Seems a little bit snug. Seems a little bit snugger, but okay, that's fine. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, solid stool. That'll do the job. So pop a solid stool just there. And then, of course, we need some method of being able to see stuff. So candles would be quite useful. So we'll just pop a candle thing over that side. What have we got left? 4,091. So we've still got a little bit of money left, which is quite good. But we do have another room ready for another vedetta. Oh, no, we don't. Hang on. We need the, the, the changing uh, cupboard thing, changing screen. Um... Where does that live? About there? That'll do. Okay, so that's in. Oh, was that facing the wrong way? Oh, yeah, that is facing the wrong way. I don't like that. I want it to face outwards. So sort of about there. Is that in line with the other one? I kind of like things to be more or less the same. No, it's not. Move over. There we go. Also, that's that pot's facing the wrong way. It should be facing sort of outwards, I imagine. Okay, a bit like that. Okay, there we go. So now we have ourselves another Vedetta room in. Now we do need to decor these out a little bit nicer so we can um, uh, charge more money for using them. But for now it will do. So it means we can get to go and hire ourselves another Vedetta if there is one around at the moment. Let's, uh, let's move the game on and just see if there's anybody that would like to stay. Okay, there's a couple. There's a couple of people. So you're, are you a bard? Okay, so we don't want another bard in. Because that's we want that room is for a vedetta. It's set up for a fancy vedetta. Um, you are you a vedetta? You possibly are. Yes, I think you might be. Um, who are you? Key. Yeah, you're going to be a vedetta. However, there was a chap, wasn't there? There was a guy. There was a bloke vedetta in here. So we've got a lady one in. I feel like it's only fair that we have a a, a man vedetta. So maybe we'll just wait for him to arrive and come back in, and we'll um. And we'll let him have that room. I think that would be fair. That would be fair, wouldn't it? There we go. Okay, right. So that, that can run on. That's all fine. Um, while they're building all this stuff, something else I was trying to do that I had no real success with <laughs> for some reason was um these little marker points. Let's pause it. These things are appearing. 
which is where we can send people on quests. Um, I did try and send Nameless, the terrifying Nameless, um, on to do a quest over here, just near Gwyn Camp. But he's got stuck in a loop. It just says he's preparing for the mission. Um, so yeah, we spent some scrolls on it and everything to find some rewards and some hazards and what have you. Um, but he's just been stuck doing that. So that's not going to work. But there are some more over here. So if we look at this, this is the Tower of Wisdom. And that is, that's the slightly sinister sounding Dark Tower. Um, so yeah, what if we look at the Dark Tower quests? So we've got all these quests here. So there's a kidnapped fiancé. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> wow. I don't know what the one means. Is that difficulty? So if we said, Kobe, go and deal with this. So one, chance of success seems pretty certain. If we put it onto seven, seems pretty certain. Oh, okay. That's not difficulty then. Um, well, how about we go and, how about we go and get a kidnapped fiancé? Let's go and do that, shall we? So let's use five scrolls to, I think it's five, to unlock a reward, which is some money, which is nice. And I don't think we need to unlock any of these things because it says, chance of success seems pretty certain. So I'm quite happy for him to go out and have a go at getting this kidnapped fiance sorted. So there we go. So now hopefully we'll see him run out of here at some point, unless he's going to glitch out like the other person. So is there something weird going on with the characters coming out? So we'll just wait for him for a little bit. We shall wait. Okay, so somebody has come out of the tavern. They're heading this way, which I wouldn't have thought would be the logical way to get to there. But okay, so they're going very, very slowly. They're going down to a timid Isolde's place. So then are they just going to wander off? There's no path after that. So I assume they're just going to make their own way, are they? Yeah, there we go. So they're going along paths that we can't see. It seems like an odd way to go just there. You're going further away, but okay. I would have thought going up that path and going that way would have been easier. But maybe it's more mountainy that way or something. So we'll see what happens with you. You're going to take an, an awfully long time to arrive there. A very long time indeed. Um, okay, now another thing I didn't do before was I did not get the Vedetta to actually do anything with anybody. Now, what, what I assume was they're in the room and they would just deal with all that themselves. But no, apparently we need to go to a person and we need to pick some sort of seducing option. So if we pause time for a second, um, what about this person here? Yes, look, there's a seduce, there's a little sort of heart option thing. So if we go to here and say, okay, right, you, Iduna, try and seduce this, seduce this gentleman just here, if you would, if you'd be so kind, you're an adventure, aren't you? Yeah, so, so there we go. So we'll see, so she will, there you go, look. Little company, care for a little company. She's trying to, she's sort of, you know, doing the, the beckoning finger thing. He is not, oh no, he is bothered. He's going with her. Okay, now this is intriguing. Now they're going to go upstairs. Now, the, um, the, <laughs> the decency filter or whatever it's called is on. <laughs> so, so I don't exactly know what's going to happen here. But this could be very interesting. Now, I guess that's why there's a little room here. And they can draw the curtains around the bed as well, I imagine. So here we go. Let's see what happens. So they're going to... They're sitting on the bed. Okay. Just having a little sit. Uh, oh, okay. Yep, she's doing some yoga moves. That's nice. She's, she's showing him how to, you know, do lunges and stretches. Free up your muscles a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Look. Praise the sun and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah, okay, that's that's nice. So, you know, just, just getting a bit more limber. Yep, he's, he's rubbing his shins. Okay, sit back down on the bed. She is now... Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Oh, right, no, she's... She's uh, she's strangling him. I don't know what she's doing. Oh, she's just giving him a little little rub down. Is that, is, that a, is that a busy day, has this man? He's had a busy day choosing the worst colour scheme that he could possibly wear. So, you know, he's picked that and you know, he needed his shoulders rubbing there. So there you go. Was that it? Oh, my goodness me. Was that... Oh, no, hang on. Are they in there? Are they in there? Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> right. Okay. And indeed, the, um, the, the, the blinds have been shut. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought they'd, I thought just the little yoga thing, the little yoga lesson in the shoulder rub was enough, but no, no, clearly, <laughs> clearly more is required. And yeah, so yeah. Oh, right. I see. So the decency filter is the is the things on the uh, on the areas, the little sort of uh, fig leaf type things. And there we go, we made some money. So pleasure's all mine, honey. Um, right, now I'm guessing, I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of, oh, he works for us, hang on, some sort of cool down, I guess. I can't just go to the, another person immediately and go, right, you, you, you. Um, let's go downstairs, find anybody. You, 
with the pointy hat on. Oh, no, 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 no. That's a person in bed upstairs. You, pointy hat. Um, yeah, there you go. So she's a, she needs a little while to sort of, you know, recharge the batteries and freshen up and all that kind of stuff. That's absolutely fine. Um, who are you? Who are you? Oh, you're an adventurer. You're Gala. Oh, you look, you look quite scary. Okay, right. Maybe we don't want you. Oh, yeah, I want the, I want the guy Vedetta to come back. Where, where is the man Vedetta? I kind of want him back in this place because I feel like that's only fair. Um, okay, we'll wait until he arrives. It's fine. We've got quite a lot of money again. The money is absolutely coming in thick and fast. Um, we did go through quite a lot of sausages last time. We go through a lot of sausages. So, um, yeah, I've put them on the watch thing. And onions as well. In fact, how are the onions doing? Um, oh, oh, they've dug them up. We haven't planted them again. Okay, right. Let's get that sorted then. Let's get some onions in the ground. Also, is it worth getting a few more of those things in now? Can we put a few more of those down? Get some more stuff growing in the garden? Because we might as well. We might as well do it. Also, we'll go and spend some money on um, putting stuff in the rooms as well. So let's just do that. Let's just outline a couple more of those. So put them in. Nice. Go back to normal mode. Right, fertilise that and fertilise that as well. Because I think we've got quite a lot of fertiliser. So that's good. And then, in these rooms, what can we do to make them a little bit fancier? And therefore, I mean we can charge a bit more money. Um, paintings. That was a good thing. The The painting of this counter costs one. Uh, it's fragile, but it greatly raises the nearby aesthetic and it costs one. Can we have multiple of these? Are we allowed multiples of them? <laughs> okay. Well, let's put it on this wall then. Let's just pop it on the wall just there in both of those rooms for a colossal one golden. Uh, yeah, that's got to be a bug. That can't be right. <laughs> okay, fine. So one of those. Um, okay, other decor. I don't think any Halloween stuff would be particularly good in those rooms. I don't think that would be... Uh, or a coffin. <laughs> I don't think that would be well received. Um, what else can we put in there to make it a bit nicer? We want things that do this. So, yeah, let's do this one. Now, they're a thousand. They're a tad more expensive. But I'm willing to pay that to get the best out of these rooms. Um, the thing is, yeah, we're going to need to fiddle about a little bit with it. Let's put it there. And let's put that there. It's just There we go. Right. So a couple of expensive paintings and a couple of cheap paintings, I'll be honest. Anything else increasing the aesthetic? Um, yeah, a few of these things do. Wooden shields, not those. Okay, how about we put, I don't know, some Sambrian banners in this one. So a Sambria banner there. And then we'll put a Yorvale banner in this one. So we'll just pop a Yorvale banner in as well. Okay, so there we go. So we've made the rooms a little bit more appealing. There's probably still some more stuff we can do. Green tapestries. Slightly fancier green tapestry. Um, green? Really? I would say that's blue, but okay. We'll put those on the walls as well, because they're not very expensive. So it's just a thing to hang on the wall. Um, oh, the rug. The rug gets dirty and it's hard to clean, but it does make things nicer. Okay, yeah, let's put a rug in as well. Let's put a rug. Can we put the rug at the bottom of the bed there? That'd be quite nice. Um, yeah, okay, let's do the same as well on that side as well. So it's only 100. There we go. Right, so we've made those rooms a little bit more fancy pants. Now, can we charge more money for them? Uh, where was the bit where we charged the monies? Um, room quality is uh, higher. Oh, hang on a minute. We've got the fancy room and then private room. Yeah, we need to name this. The fancy room is that one. So now this room needs a name as well. Yes, yeah, so currently it's called private room. Now that's that's just not really good enough. There we go. It can be the la di da room because one's fancy and the other is a bit oh la di da. So there we go. So we've got the fancy room and the la di da room. Yeah, that one is not rented. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the other Vedetta guy to appear. I want him to be in there because yeah, that that's kind of a, a fun thing we can do. I mean, we could get anyone in. There's an adventurer just here. I completely forgot how that went over there. How are you? Oh, you're still not there. Of course, yeah, we pause it for a bit. You're still wandering over hills and dales. Okay, fine, right. You've not quite made it there yet. Um, what we might do is we'll wait. We'll wait until uh, Cody, is it, gets over to there. Um, and then we'll see what's going on. However, we could we could look at putting some other stuff in the garden now. Because we've got all these, we've got some, some vegetable patches. But we can also grow things on trellises. So we can grow other stuff as well. So we've got this here. So a trellis, if you want to uh, grow some taller plants. So yeah, we might want to grow beans. We do go through a few beans in this place. So maybe 
Maybe we'll get some trellis in as well. The only thing is, I don't know how much room we need. I do find it a little bit weird that, that we're going to be building all this stuff next to the outside toilet. But there we go, never mind. And the rat catching thing as well. Um, let's put the trellises... Um, I don't know, let's put one there and one there for now. And we'll just see how they function. So what can we put on a trellis? Um, water or plant? So we plant hops, tomatoes or beans. Well, we use beans. So let's actually put some beans onto them. Do they not need a like a plot of land to go into? Or do they just literally just, that, that's fine, is it? And as long as you water them, it's all okay. Um, so that looks like it's been fertilised. The ground looks like it's had something done to it. Yeah, soil quality is nice and high. Um, has that got anything in? Are we growing anything there? Yeah, it says onions. I, I don't I don't believe that. If we've got a plant option. So put onions into the ground there, please. Okay, that's good. And then here, let's plant some different things. We can have carrots. I didn't know that. We'll plant carrots and potatoes. Because why the heck not? And there we go. We've got things growing. Oh, this is very exciting. Oh, I like this. That's very good. Okay, so more stuff is growing that we're going to use. Uh, we've got Vedetta things going on. Oh, it's all looking, it's all looking very, very good. So what we're going to do is we'll run time on a little bit. I want to get a bit more money back in because we spent quite a bit on making fancy rooms and whatnot. Um, how are you doing? Um, oh, are you on your way back? Hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened here? Get reports from the quest. Vico? Oh, no, not Vico. No, no, you're not Vico. You're, you're Kobe. Kobe, how did it? How did it go? Did it go? <laughs> Kobe, did you just not even bother going there? Because it was a long way away. Okay, now I'm a little bit confused. So do we get a, do we get a quest report or something coming in here? Do we get a little, a little update when they return? I don't know. Right, so they've come back. Key has visited the inn. Yes, okay. Um, okay, well, there you go. So you've come back in. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, quests. I'm a bit confused. Did you do the quest or not? Um, maybe somebody else rescued them. Is that how many days there is left? Possibly, ah, maybe that's the number of days. I know, but it, I swear it didn't say. Well, no, 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 it's not the days left. There's 12. Okay, I don't really know what happened there. That didn't seem to work. Um, I know, missing child. Let's do that. So where is it on the in the world? It's it's all the way down there. Crikey, that's, that's quite some way away. Did I have a message to the besieged city? Where's that? Oh, that's only up here. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, go and do that. Absolutely. Um, oh, yeah, that, this is the one where the other guy's been sent to do it. And he obviously has not got there. So, yes, okay. We'll send you off to there, Kobe. Go and actually do something. You're preparing for a mission. <laughs> okay. One thing I did do that has not worked is I added a new item to the menu. And I added deer haunch. So we got the berries in and we got plenty of wine and we've also ordered the venison but there is nowhere to put the venison. The venison is out here. It's been on this pallet for many many days. I imagine now it is the mouldiest most fly riddled <laughs> maggot crawling venison there is but it's out here on the pallet and I believe that's because we need somewhere special to put meat like that. Now sausages which are also meat are fine. They can go on shelves but for some reason, that haunch there can't. And I think we need to do this. We need a larder for storing meat. So it says here, you need a larder for storing meat, needs ice. And then just here is a dugout used for storing ice. So we're going to need to have a dugout for ice in order to allow us to get a larder to store that meat. And once that's stored, that means we can put it on the menu. Because apparently that's a good thing and people will like that. And also we can charge quite a lot of money for it. It's relatively expensive to get together. That stuff was not cheap. So um, it would be good if we could do that. Now, we're not getting the um, upgrade points coming in anymore. We do have a lot of people in the inn right now, which is very good indeed. And um, yeah, money is coming in quite nicely. How is it looking down here? Ricodi, can we get a trade route with you yet? Yes, we possibly can. How much money is that going to be? 500 or 20 of those. Do you know what? Let's let's use 20 of those. We get those in quite quickly anyway. Um, oh, they, they have popular as of candles. That could be quite useful. So yeah, all right, we'll do that. That's opened up some more things. And, oh, crikey, yes. Okay, I was just going to click on the book to get the reward, but never mind. Okay, so Martin's here. Of course, says another. Of course. Bovarok's fangs. This nightmare will never be over. Okay, what's happening, Martin? You okay? There's another letter. I swear, my whole life I haven't gotten as much correspondence as been going through this in recently. Okay, is it addressed to me? It's addressed to the future king of Yorvale. 
That sure ain't me. I hope. Okay, who is it from? I don't know, but it appeared out of nowhere on the counter. So I assume it's from our mysterious friend. Yeah, surely we notice who's coming in and leaving it on the counter. Come on now, just show me. So again, this is Martin reading this. Your Highness, I write this letter in urgency. Open it finds you in time. Chancellor Trovin, an awful man, whom I suspect to be up to no good, will soon arrive in your inn. Oh, no bother. Be wary and careful, for I have heard he has plans for you. I will try and learn as much as I can to help you in your dealings with him. Your humble servant. Ah, maybe Trovin doesn't know who we are. But he does know we own an inn in a quite a good sort of uh, position on the world map. Okay, so it's a letter from the same person before. Warns us that Trovin is coming here. It says something about a guy called Trovin. Well, we know about Trovin, so yeah, we'll go for that one. Trovin? That's the bleeder with whom Lady Commander was conspiring. But why would he be coming here? He's a Chancellor, you know. And those usually hate the spotlight. I don't know if it's good or bad luck, my boy. You might not be ready to deal with this. God damn it, I hate the nobles. Okay. So what do we do? So we say, don't tell me you're scared. That's intimidation. That is strange. What would a, uh, a Chancellor want with us for 80% or 70% passion? Okay, so what do we do with this? I think let's go. I quite like the passion one. Let's do that. You know, I'm supposed to be this sort of dramatic, sort of excitable type. So let's go for that. Nothing to worry. We've dealt with worse and we'll come out on top. And it succeeded as well, so that's raised. <laughs> I guess you're right. We're a pretty good duo when it comes to dealing with those goddamn conspirators. Speaking of which, look. Relationship with Martin. Titans, he looks at me with admiration. Oh, thank you, Martin. Okay, end conversation. Right, he just told me to look. Does that mean your man is here? Um, possibly. Ah, yes, you. You look like the kind of gentleman. Oh, yes, you look very stuffy indeed. Look at that. You've got a little sort of posh thing around your neck. Oh, yeah, you're going to be all sorts of trouble. You are going to be all sorts of trouble. Can you not just leave us alone, please? We're just trying to make a nice tavern. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, I assume you are Mr. Trovin. There you are. Oh, you look a bit Weasley there. You look a little bit Weasley. So let's have a look at him. He's got a bag of monies. He's got himself... It's a clipboard almost with, with well, presumably important documents on. Little kind of... Little sort of nose glass type things. And a fancy... Is that a cravat you put around your neck? It might be a cravat. Okay, I think I've picked what he's going to sound like. So, Trovin, what do you have to say for yourself? So, this is the famous Crossroads Inn. And it's famous innkeeper. Greetings. Greetings. Okay, right. Yeah, he's a bit West Country. He's a bit West Country of the UK like that. Hello there. So, um, okay, right. So, Chancellor Trovin, I presume. Who may you be kind, sir? Or the inn's closed leave? Okay, let's go for this one. Who may you be kind, sir? If he's going to be trouble, which people in the comments seem to be implying he might end up being, we might as well try to get on his good side early on. So, who may you be kind, sir? Such manners. Ha! <laughs> be that expected or unexpected, allow me to introduce myself. I am Chancellor Trovin, and for the next few days, I will be your greatest nightmare or sweetest friend. Okay, that seems weird. So, relationship with Trovin Titans, Trovin totally agrees with me. Okay, good. What do you mean? Well, you see, my kind friend, it seems that you forgot to pay your taxes. Any and all of them. For the long, long months that your inn has been operating and bringing you quite a profit from what I gather. So many sweet little coins staying so far away from their rightful home in the royal treasury... No worries though, my friend, for here I am, to right the wrongs and all that. I'm sure this whole thing is just a simple mistake, right? Okay, okay, so he is coming to to rob us, essentially. Right you are. So taxes, who are you again is intimidation. I can go deception, saying I've paid all my taxes, or oratory. Now, oratory's got a 90% chance of success. I think we'll go down that. So kind sir, I'm a well-known businessman. Surely you don't expect there to be anything wrong in my books. Let's go for that option. Ah, good, and it succeeded. Marvellous. Oh my, a skilled businessman and a great speaker. How strange to find such a creature here, in the middle of nowhere. Strange indeed. Nevertheless, being in the middle of nowhere that you are, I fear you might have never learned about a few new, very important taxes. Oh, I see. It's like that, is it? New taxes? Oh yes, and there's quite a lot of them. Lots and lots of lovely new taxes. I'll gladly introduce you to them. How about that? Um, okay, yes, with pleasure, yes, of course. Uh, well, first one is a tax of 100 guldens for each hour I remain without my own room in this inn. Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. I'm beginning to count, innkeeper, starting now. 
Oh, crikey. Okay, right. Pause time. Hang on one second. <laughs> so he needs a room. I don't think we have any rooms available. I think all the rooms are occupied. Um, who can we boot? Oh, no. That room isn't rented. Hang on. Who is in our rooms? That's a shame. Golden Vico is in that one. Then we've got Kobe in that one. And then there's someone in this one, I think. There's two not rented. What was who was in the RA room? The original RA room. And then this one is the Yorva room. So who was in these? There was a merchant I thought was in that one. Oh, the merchant got murdered. And that was it. And then um and then Thingy left, didn't she? Calisthair's gone. Oh yeah, you can have have that room. Have the Yorvale room. That's quite nice. That's a, a sort of two-star quality. Either or. Either or, it's all fine. Okay, yes. Hello. Um, yeah, you can absolutely have a room. Are you gonna want one of these rooms, however? That's the question. You can have have the Ore room. It's at the back just there. It's quite a nice room. It's got a bed in and a desk for you to do your stuff. So there you go. So, right. So I've given you that. Also, I do want to go and um, claim that. A big star. 53 up to 54. Okay. Now that's quite good because 54, that means we get uh, an upgrade point. And that means we can start working our way to this. So we could get the larder for storing meat, but it needs ice to work. But we could also get a dugout for storing ice. And that means we can get ice in. And then when we do get to build the larder, the ice will be there. So let's do that. So let's get ice on board. Which seems like a bit of a weird thing to get. But okay. Um, I, should we buy ice? I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not sure. So now can we build a dugout for ice? Uh, I mean, what does that even, what does it even look like? I don't know where the ice dugout is. There is a roof option in the build mode, which I've never noticed before. But yeah, look, we have we have a roof and you can choose the style of roof. I, I didn't even know that was a thing that we had available. I mean, the roof's gone all sorts of weird just there. But yeah, there we go. So we do have option to put to put roofing in if we want to and change what it looks like. Yeah, I hadn't realised that was even a thing. So yeah, well, hang on, does it cost money to change the roof? Oh, we can make it a blue roof. Oh, yes. Hang on, can we have a yellow roof? Oh, that looks... That looks kind of obscure. Let's have that, shall we? Okay. Um, but yeah, I can't find out where the ice thing is. It might be because I've not moved time on. Let's just let's just move time on, shall we? Let's see what happens. So, have we done this? So, Trovin's arrival. Okay, so 54 up to 55. Okay, this is marvellous news. Okay, so now let's have a look at this. I'm slightly terrified. Your debt to Trovin equals... Okay, so we've got nothing here yet. Okay, so... Yeah, we need to make sure that he's got a room. Okay. Innkeeper, innkeeper, what am I to do with you? Um, okay, what do you mean, sir? Is something the matter? It's such an awful, such an awful thing, my friend. My men have found out you've been working with the infamous aviary. Buying wine from them, taking care of the bandits who visit your inn. Such a shame and such a terrible offence. It seems I'll have to confiscate your inn and put your poor self in chains along with that old guy. What's his name? My inn? Something like that. Okay, right. So, because I've been working with the Avery, you who were the guys at the very, very start who got us wine when we were near, when we were with Rockbury, I think, wasn't it? Wasn't that right at the very start? Um, okay, so because we've worked with them, you now want to take the inn away and 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 lock us away too. Okay, right. Yeah, you are an unpleasant gentleman. Um, okay, I've never heard of no Avery. Chancellor, please, that's a passion call, 75%, or oratory, 90%. I'm going to have to go for that again. What a terrible time to be alive. A poor innkeeper forced to work with thieves just to make an honest living. Let's go for that one, shall we? Success, good. And it raised again. Ha! I suppose it's not easy being an innkeeper in such a terrible place. <laughs> Still, though, a crime is a crime. and You will not escape the chains, my poor friend. Unless... Unless what? I, I imagine you're going to uh, want to have a great big pile of money. Unless what? Well, you see, all your crime against the crown is an awful thing. The aviary itself is a much bigger threat and offender. Sadly, its members value loyalty above all. A notion that's as pathetic as it's problematic for us on its lawmakers and enforcers. Of all the members of the aviary we've managed to capture, none will betray their comrades. But that's where you come into the picture. Okay, what would you have me do? You want me to betray the Avery, or I know what you're suggesting, and you must be out of your mind. Don't say that to him. He'll take the place away and lock us up. No, no, don't do that. So, um, yeah, we'll go for you want me to betray the Avery, because, you know, that that's the, exactly what he's saying. It's fairly clear that that's what he would like. So, you want me to betray the Avery. It's either your head and you're in, or theirs. But you won't even have to get your hands dirty. Just contact a friend of yours. Tell them you want to join the Avery. Find out where their main base of operations we know it's somewhere in Ore. I need to know where it is exactly. 
or just get rid of the aviary altogether, should you find another way of doing so. Okay, why exactly is a Chancellor trying to take out an entire faction of outlaws? Well, ever since our poor, poor King Owen died, I took it upon my shoulders to continue his good work. All that I do is for the good of the kingdom and keeper, and surely you don't want a kingdom run by thieves and murderers, right? I need to think about this. Please do. In the meantime, due to the latest bill about unlawful assemblies, you will pay a fee every time the number of guests in your inn exceeds the legal limit. Okay, what is the legal limit? Uh, how many guests is that? Oh, um, ten patrons top. Yeah, yes. No, five? Five, yeah, something like that. The bill is being prepared as we speak. You're just making these up, you silly man. And how long will that be in effect? Ah, as long as that band of thieves and cutthroats at Cold Says Avery is a threat to the kingdom. I cannot imagine an earlier end to this oh-so-important law. I hope you understand. Okay, right, so blackmail. Blackmail is your game, right you are. So you're going to rip us off with a ridiculous tax until we deal with these people. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Oh dear. Okay, now the other thing is, how, how does he tax us? Does the money just come out or what? I don't know. So, in how big a trouble are we? I tried to listen in on your conversation, but the end is too loud. Okay, so he knows about us trading with the Avery. He said he'll take the inn and put us in chains unless we betray them. Nothing the two of us cannot deal with, my friend, but Trovin knows about our dealings with the Avery and wants us to betray them. I'm not going for the negative one. So let's go for that one. Betray the Avery? We can't do that. So relationship tightens, yep, and he, he winks at us cheekily, my goodness. Um, I know that, but what do we do, friend? Loyalty above all. That's what being your father's soldier taught me. And that's also the fundament of the Avery. That's why, even though they break the law, there's always been a sort of understanding between them and us. And that's why I knew Remy would help us with our Rockbury troubles. And that's why we have to warn him. Okay, we need to form a plan then. Um, oh, hello, who are you? <laughs> Who's this guy? Okay, he looks rather fancy pants. He's got shiny baubles and... Uh, a sort of a cane with a shiny thing on the top and he's got rings yeah he's got bling he's got a fancy robe on it's got kind of fur on the side of it um okay right you're rich and important oh and you've got a raised eyebrow as well if i may interject okay and who are you sir my name is baron Isariak. your highness it is i who has been sending you the messages i was hoping to arrive at your inn before the dreaded chancellor but i'm too late I see that worm is already here and feeling at home. Sadly, being a rather recognisable person, I had to take a lot of precautions and travel incognito. Even staying here puts me at risk of being recognised by that blasted Chancellor. Still, I do believe it's of utmost importance that I do whatever I can to help you, Your Highness. Okay, so Baron Izariak, Izariash, however you pronounce that, um, he knows who we are, obviously, so... Um, right. How come you know I'm King Owen's son? That's the most pressing question right now. Your father trusted me above many others, your highness. I knew about your existence and loyal Martin's mission the moment those came to be. I was also very a conspiracy against the king, led by Trovin. Sadly, I failed him. But I intend not to repeat that mistake. This is why I arrived here as soon as I could. I wish to offer you my advice and help in any way I can. Okay, so Martin should recognise him, potentially. Martin might know him. And was it Trovin that, that killed the king? Was it Trovin that killed the king? Oh my goodness me, I don't know now. Okay, so Baron who? Yes, I come from an old and rather powerful noble family, if I may say so myself. My whole life I've been supporting your father, be it openly or in secret. Your father had a lot of enemies, your highness. I like to think he had a friend in me. So it's you I was not expecting a Baron. It's only right that a baron serves his king and uses his power and wisdom for the advantage of the monarch. I was hoping my letter will help with the conflict on the Yorvel and Untamarkian border. Now I'm here personally, ready to support you in whatever way I can. Although I do have to ask that you keep my identity and presence a secret from that blasted worm, Trophin. Had he learned that I'm here, he surely would start suspecting there's more to you than he sees, your highness. Oh, absolutely. I'm not going to tell that more on anything. No. Um, of course, thank you for your service, baron. I'll take all the help I can get. Yes, absolutely. I'm here merely to offer advice and friendship. Should, there, should you favour any of those, I'd be more than delighted. But I mean not to pressure you, your highness. I've seen Trovin wanted something of you. What might that be? Okay. Uh, Trovin knows about me dealing with the aviary. He told me to get rid of them. And it's something we cannot do. The aviary helped us in the past, Baron. We have to find another way. Okay. 
And this is Martin, Baron Zariag, my guardian, and a friend. Yeah, let's go down that one. It's a relationship with Martin Titans. I see. I know a lot about you, friend. Famous soldier, good friend of the king. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, though the circumstances are less than pleasant. Indeed. Pleasantries aside, gentlemen, what do we do? Let's just, let's just, you know, keep it, keep it, keep it going on. We've got to figure out what we need to do. All this sort of, <laughs> all these pleasantries are not getting us anywhere. We have to find a way to warn the aviary that Trolvin is coming after them. What do you think, Baron? I'm afraid I'll have to put myself in opposition to the gallant Martin. Even if you did have dealings with the aviary, they are a group of criminals. A group of dangerous, organised criminals. Thieves, highwaymen, even assassins. A future king cannot rely on nor allow for such an organisation to exist. You'd be putting yourself and the very future of your lineage at risk. There is no honour among killers. Okay, this is very interesting because I this looks like a decision point. Can't we just ignore Trovin and throw him out? The situation is absurd. I have to agree with Martin. We cannot betray our friends. So that would make him a bit grumpy with me. But I mean, he'd probably still support me in my decision by the sounds of it. You make a very good point, Baron. We cannot allow for criminals to roam free, especially if it puts the future of the kingdom at risk. Thank you both for your advice. I need to think about the best course of action, and I'll speak to one of you shortly. Okay, yeah, we're going to pick that. We're going to sit completely on the fence right now. I'm not going to pick that. We can't throw Trophy trophy out. I don't do what. Is it worth asking? But it's not really. Yeah, go on, let's pick it anyway. We're not ready to take him on. He's much more powerful than anyone we've faced before. Really? I'm afraid that's a thing we both agree on, my liege. Oh dear. Okay, right. So either we go with you, Baron, what's, what's your name? Baron Thingamajigger, and we get rid of the aviary, or we go with Martin, and we stick with the aviary, or I just sit on the fence for now and not make a decision. Let's do that. Yay, I, I will think about things, and I'll come and chat to you in a bit. My boy. Oh no, my boy, aren't you forgetting something? We should welcome the Baron to the inn. Oh yes, of course. Maybe you'd like to stay with this Baron if you need a bed. You're more than welcome to. Oh, your highness, I, I don't mean to be a bother, but if there's a possibility for me to stay here, I'd be honoured. I'm quite tired after the journey, you see. Okay, let's get to work. Right, pause time for a second. You, um, what's your plan? Uh, we, we must hurry. Who knows what else that worm Trovin has in store? What's your plan? Oh, oh, hang on. Hang on, no, 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 I don't, no, I want to get you a room. <laughs> I've not gone with your plan. Oh, botherations. I would have gone with Martin. I just wanted to get you a room. I want to click on you and get a room book for you. Ah, <laughs> uh, Okay, we'll go with him. Let's go with Baron Watson's name. Yay, there we go. First, you need to summon a member of the Avery, you know, into the inn. Can do what then? Trovin wants you to find out exactly where the headquarters of the Avery are. Let's do exactly that. We'll offer our Averian, Averian friend a glass of Requor. It's an almost legendary beverage. The Apple will not pass an opportunity to try it. However, the alcohol has a strong stimulating effect on the drinker, which will make him more talkative. Okay, Rob, what? Requor. I'm going to pronounce it as Requor. It's a sweet liqueur made of the Raku plant by sheep shepherds living in the hills of Arkor. It's almost impossible to get hold of it, since the Highlanders will share it only with an adventurer who tells them a story they've never heard before. And since everyone wants to impress them, they've already heard many a fantastic tale. Luckily, I managed to hire a very talented bard who obtained a small flask of it. I see. Under the influence of the drink, the representative will tell us all we need to know. Exactly. After that, we'll have the guards take him away. The Avery will be dealt with. Trovin will be satisfied. And a vision of your peaceful and fruitful rule over your vale will be that much closer. Just take care of Rakor, because this is all I've got. All right, I'll put a message up on the message board. That's how we've contacted the aviary before. Yeah, that, that didn't kind of entirely go according to plan. Now I can get him a room. Or do I talk to Martin as well? Hang on, let's get you a room first. Hello, uh, would you like to go into... Uh, hang on, which one do you want? Trovin? Trovin's in that. That's empty. Um, it must be in the style of your veil. It is. It's the your veil room. Hang on a minute. Are you trying to tell me the your veil room isn't your veily enough? <laughs> it's got no style. It's got your veil stuff all over it. Oh, crikey. Okay, fine. Hang on one moment. Let's just chuck some more your veil things around the place. Um, okay. Uh, a shield uh, there and a shield there. There we go. Is the room now your veily enough? 
Is it now your Veily? Yes, it is. Okay, marvellous. Right, now we can chuck him in that room. So you go into... There we go. Go into the your Veil room. Yes, absolutely. Right, okay. So you've got that. So... Oh, no. <laughs> every hour your debt to travel will rise for every guest over the limit. <laughs> oh, no. There's 40 people in here. Ah, solve the aviary matter. Yeah, we need to do this quite quickly then. So... We've listened to, to Trovin's plan. Let's listen to Martin's plan. Okay, right. This is the plan. So Trovin's plan is get somebody in and get them drunk. Okay, right. Martin, um, what's what's your that that that's not it's not talking to Martin. Hang on, hang on. Play. Talk to Martin. There we go. I'm not ex I'm not sure what to think about the Baron, but I know we cannot betray the Avia and Renmi. They helped us in trouble. We've got to do the same for them. So do you know the Baron? I've heard of him. I might have seen him once or twice at the court. A powerful and well-respected man. Can't tell you much more than that, sadly. Right, what's your plan? First, we contact Renmi. Once he arrives, we warn him about Trovin and the storm that is brewing around the aviary. How do we contact him? Same as before, we put a message up on the message board that says, A cuckoo always cuckoos thrice. This will get the aviary's attention. Okay, and then what? We need to convince Renmi to lay low, and I mean really low. And at least until we figure out what to do about that blinker Trovin. I hope that'll be enough. Okay, right on it and there we go so now we've got ourselves the two agendas we've got martin who wants to keep the aviary alive by messaging them and saying oh be quiet and hide a bit and then we've got the baron who wants to come in and we give him some lovely booze and it makes him speak quite freely and then we're able to find out where the headquarters is and then we wipe them out okay <laughs> right also we need to convince trovin to lift his ban if you know what to do, talk to Martin or the Baron. I mean, can we talk to Trovin? I do not know. I don't know. I mean, we've got 4,131 monies, which seems quite good. That seems like a good thing. I mean, can we pay off some of this ridiculous tax thing that he wants? Where is he? Is he upstairs? Where is Mr. Trovin? Um, he had that room at the back, didn't he? Um... He's been in here because the bed is the bed is unmade. So I guess he's been in there. I do not know where he is right now. I wonder if we need to chat to him at some point in order to try to get him to drop this really ridiculous ban. <laughs> this Not ban, uh, this sort of uh, this silly rule thing that he's put on us to uh, charge us loads of tax for no real reason. But there we go. Do you know what we'll do is, what we'll do is, we'll finish up for now and we'll come back next time and we'll see how we get on because we've moved the story on quite a bit. Yeah, We've got the next kind of bit of the puzzle going on. We've got Trovin in and he wants to you know, either uh, get us to do stuff that he wants uh, or he'll just take the inn away and uh, lock us away in a prison. So he's blackmailing us. But of course, we've got Martin on our side. Martin does not want us to betray the Avery. Then we've got the Baron, the newly found Baron. He does want us to betray the Avery. So we've got to make a decision one way or the other. I'm not entirely sure what to do. So we shall ponder it. And next time we'll make the decision. But yes, we shall finish things up for now. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, then please do leave a like. That would be most splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here in Crossroads Inn. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. How are we doing? You've just circumvented the queue. You, Sarah, cheat. Oh my goodness me, there's 12 million people that just come in from an airplane. Are you a skeleton? Are you just Skeletor? Is that all it is? You, madam. You are a pain. You are a scourge upon this earth. People are urinating on the floor.